Final Fantasy X-2 is the upcoming sort of next chapter in the Final Fantasy X story. The game's sort of a dream come true for a lot of fans that have been hoping that Square would continue on with some of the characters that have appeared in previous games in some way. And this seems to be their attempt at sort of like meeting fans halfway. The game was released in Japan earlier this year and we were a little puzzled by it. It, uh, it definitely was a change of pace and a very different experience than Final Fantasy X. Whereas Final Fantasy X was very much sort of in the tradition of the Square style RPGs with turn-based combat and exploration and all those sorts of things, um, Ten Two sort of put a different twist on it and added some very unique elements to combat. Most notably, uh, the ability to change the outfits that your party is wearing uh, and give them different abilities. We've recently got an exclusive look at the US version of the game and have sort of been getting a feel for what exactly is going on because obviously it was a little hard to follow the Japanese version. And just to see how it all made sense and how the localization was actually going to have everything work. And surprisingly it does. A lot of the voice cast from the original Final Fantasy X cast is back. And obviously Yuna and Riku who are two of the main characters because in this game you pretty much just control three characters, uh, Yuna, Riku and Pain. The game story uh, revolves around Yuna's sort of quest of self-discovery because after the end of the events in Final Fantasy X, she was just sort of looking for a purpose and she hooked up with Riku who was always sort of a free spirit uh, and she has now become a sphere hunter which is sort of uh, a group of you know, fun mercenaries who go off looking for the kinds of memory spheres and stuff that you were encountering in Final Fantasy X. In this particular case, they're looking for spears to fill in the history of Spira. The game opens with Yuna being pushed in a new direction after discovering a sphere that has uh, a little clip of what appears to be Titus in, from Final Fantasy X in, some, in a not very pleasant situation. And so she's very curious to find out what's going on and that kind of forms the basis of the game. The gameplay in Final Fantasy X-2 differs quite a bit from Final Fantasy X in that well, a lot of the basic mechanics are pretty much the same. You're still going to have turn-based kind of active time battle thing that Square's known for. And you are going to be exploring and traveling to different locations. Uh, the game structure is now mission-based. And so what's basically going to happen is the world map will have specific hotspots, as denoted by, you know, little, little markers that you're going to go to and fulfill certain missions. And each, uh, each set of missions is broken up into sort of like a story level. So story level one is made up of a certain number of missions and once you complete them you advance to story level two which has its own set of missions. Like in addition to the main missions for each story level you're also going to find subquests by visiting certain areas. Uh, the map kind of lets you know when there's a mission available and when you know there's nothing to do but just sort of like hang out and talk to people. The gameplay in Final Fantasy X-2 is very different from the previous game and it's also a little silly. I mean, the sort of changing of the outfits is kind of campy and the music and a lot of the, a lot of the situations that the girls find themselves in are a little over the top and not necessarily what you would be expecting from, you know, a company that's as, I guess, straight-laced as Square. However, there is still a lot of the depth that you would actually expect out of a Square game because the different outfits that you have go up uh, in experience and ability as they're used and then you start to gain unique abilities per outfit which is very similar to the things that you're doing in a regular Final Fantasy game which is kind of interesting um, because despite the fact that the game's kind of silly and goofy in places uh, the gameplay is rock solid, there's a lot of depth there uh, you'll be able to customize their outfits, earn new outfits uh, and earn different sort of configurations of a new sphere grid which is what lets you change outfits during battle. The other really interesting thing is the localization is pretty good and the surprising thing is that the story actually has kind of a it's kind of a cool wistful tone to it because in a lot of parts of the game you're kind of there's a voiceover. It's basically Yuna sort of reflecting on what she's going through at the at the time, almost like she's talking to Titus. And, you know, the game's, for as goofy as it can be, the game also has kind of a surprisingly wistful streak that's pretty cool. As far as the graphics go, the game looks better than Final Fantasy X. Um, they've tightened things up considerably. 
uh, in terms of the presentation. The combat's fast-paced. The, the sort of changes that the girls go through as they're like switching outfits are very cool and over the top, but at the same time they have kind of the same production value as a, as a, as a summon, which is neat. As far as the audio goes, there's a really cool collection of music that's, you know, surprisingly like disco -y, which is odd. I mean, that was the one thing that struck us when we were playing the import was it's like you didn't, you like, you just wouldn't expect to hear sort of like club tunes out of a Final Fantasy X game consistently. Like maybe you'll find the club town or something, and there'll be something funny in there. But to have that consistently through a game is kind of interesting. Um, but it actually works, uh, and that's what's impressed us the most. Is you know, they Square's actually done something pretty different with the game. Uh, it's not necessarily uh, for everybody. I think it's something that's going to appeal to fans of the series for sure, uh, because you're able to not only catch up with Yuna and Riku, but there's quite a few cameos in the game from characters from Final Fantasy X, so you kind of see how everybody's doing. You're going to see you know, how Waka and Lulu ended up and things like that, which is very cool. And from a technical standpoint, it actually does push the PlayStation 2 a little farther in terms of performance, uh, and it's really pretty to look at. It's not really surprising um, that you know we were going to be into Final Fantasy X-2 when it was localized and brought here, but we are kind of impressed with the, the different sort of approach the story is taking. Um, it's probably less goofier than we expected in some spots, and in others it's pretty much on target. Uh, but either way, it's a really interesting game and sort of um, something cool and different from Square that should appeal to a bunch of folks. So. If you're curious or if you're a fan of the series, you should definitely check it out. Uh, Final Fantasy X-2 is currently slated to ship this fall for the PlayStation 2.